delicious. How are you doing? <coughs> well, I hope. Did you see Britain's Got Talent on the telly? Yeah. Amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. According to Ofcom, the organisation that regulates the media here in the UK, children aged 12 to 15 now watch around 17 hours a week watching TV. Does that sound like a lot to you? Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I don't think it's very surprising either, given that these days we can watch TV everywhere, all over the house, in cars, in the gym, and on our handheld devices like our mobiles and iPods. We even watch TV in, in here, in school, for purely educational purposes, of course. And there are hundreds of satellite and cable channels that are available at the flick of a switch. And if we tire of them, we can pop in our favourite film any time we choose. But is this bad for us? Some critics and researchers think so. They claim that it damages our social health. Scientists are warning that teenagers who watch more than five hours of television a day will become fat and become obese when they're adults. <laughs> However, they don't warn us about sitting down to read a good book is bad for us. Oh no, read is going to improve our imagination and intellect. Maybe it's all the commercials during breaks rather than the programs themselves. After all, I've never seen adverts for Burger King, KFC and Subway during the Atlantic Rider novel. Then there's our parents and guardians. You're in the middle of watching something really <coughs> gripping on the TV, and they breeze past saying something like, enough TV now, you'll get bad eyes, or enough TV now, you'll get square eyes. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm only 11, but to this day, I have never, ever seen anyone with square eyes. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I think that the parents are partly to blame them. If they hadn't blocked us down in front of Teletubbies in the first place, <laughs> so they could get on with an important job around the house, we wouldn't have got booked in the first place. Personally, I got a lot out of Sesame Street. Researchers, not the same ones that say TV is bad for you, by the way, have even studied something called the Sesame Effect, which suggests that children who watch Sesame Street as a preschooler eventually achieve higher grades when they're in high school. So what should we believe? Like books, I think that good television programs, like the one that David Attenborough makes, can make us learn new things about the world around us. But we should be careful to vary what we watch, like see too many American shows like The Big Bang Theory, and we'll all <coughs> grow up thinking everyone has perfect white teeth, plays baseball in perpetual sunshine, has takeouts every night for dinner, and 911 is the emergency number to call over here. I don't think TV programs can harm your eyesight or hearing, unless the child has to sit very loud, sit very close to the TV screen. In fact, one useful clue to picking up hearing or vision problems in a child is if they have to sit very close to the TV screen or have to turn the volume up loud. Maybe it's more the television sets that are bad for us. Think about it. Mounting a 72-inch TV to your wall causes a severe back injury, and I dare not think if it fell off the wall. The safety risks associated with 3D television sets have also been created in stuff, with people experiencing headaches, nausea, or even eye strain. And don't think that small screens can be any safer, with over 30% of mobile owners now watching TV via their phones. Imagine how many accidents are waiting to happen. People, all those people bumping into lampposts, and even each other. <laughs> After that, I think being a couch potato sounds pretty safe to me. But, although I don't want to get fat, so perhaps I'm doing, I'll do my doing in the gym from now on. And if you're watching me on iPlayer, do not go, do not go as a lion's mouth. You're very